Whether we like it or whether we believe it or not. This New World Order is nothing new, actually. All this has happened before, in Genesis at the Tower of Babel. So let's briefly look at the story and the major characteristics of this Old World Order. Genesis 11.1 1, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Genesis 11.4 And they said, Come, let us build a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name. So instead of spreading out and replenishing the earth as they were commanded, they grouped together under Nimrod, who was the world's first dictator. Man began to govern man, which is the exact opposite of what God wanted. God is who we are to serve and whom governs the world. So here we have Nimrod, who brought the world into one large political entity, a one world rule. Then we have one economy. Because they're not split up, so there's only one economy throughout the world. And his wife slash mother, yeah, Semiramis, brought in the one world religion, which was centered on the worship of Nimrod and the worship of her as a goddess, wouldn't you know it, right? So we have three different things here. We have a one world political entity, we have a one world economy, and we have a one world religion. These are the major characteristics of the coming New World Order. And oh yeah, lest I forget, God came down and confounded their language. That's why it was called Babel, because they could no longer understand one another. And isn't it interesting that if you go to the United Nations today, one of the major characteristics is this. They reinterpret all the world's languages back into one, subverting what God had done. And one more point to solidify the fact that the Tower of Babel typology that I'm using from the Old Testament is actually accurate. Take a close look at the European Union building that they've recently constructed in Europe. It is an unfinished Tower of Babel. They did this on purpose. It is a signal to the rest of the world that until there is full unity in this new world order, the tower will not be completed. The New World Order is housed right here at the United Nations. It uh, is global government. A world currency, a world government, a world army, a world religion. Where institutions of freedom have lain dormant, the United Nations can offer them new life. These institutions play a crucial role in our quest for a new world order. Their agenda is control. Control of our currency, control of our families, of our freedoms, of our religions, they want it all. An order characterized by the rule of law rather than the resort to force. World War I, World War II were both created to bring about the United Nations. They're in the war business. Wars, like bridges, are engineered. This new world order is in the war business and to create the war they can then say that they want peace they couldn't this would never have been built without the the, uh, the aid of world war one without the aid of world war two there's creating events in the world like wars and terrorist um, situations, runs on currencies, stock market collapses, which create situations of problems which the public then demand that they provide answers and solutions to the problems and then those who've covertly created the problems and got that public reaction do something then offer the solution to the problem. Sometimes primitive force is the only way. Helps if there's some kind of legal reason behind it, of course, something outrageous to provoke a response. Do you have any suspects? Has anyone been arrested? What actions will you take as a result of this? This be a communist plot. What happens? Apparently, a Dutch communist broke in and set the fire. Police have him under arrest. Tell Rome he can still be of some service. You were talking about an enemies list. That's not a bad idea.
This, this is a signal from God. We are under siege. The terrorists have opened fire, and we will fire back. It's good to see him so happy. This is an outrageous crime, and someone will answer. But this completely overrides the Constitution. Effectively, it puts you in charge. These are troubled times, sir. The Constitution could not anticipate them. The National Monument has been destroyed. Our democracy is under attack. If we're to wage war on these foreign infiltrators, certain civil rights must be suspended. And power is seized instead of bestowed. The hand that seizes it is often burnt. The Reichstag must approve this before I sign anything. In order for the government to carry out necessary procedures against terrorism, Reichstag must support an enabling act. This act is your opportunity to hand power over those that can wield it most effectively. From now on, all legislation will be handled by the administration, which will have sole right to make constitutional changes. Freedoms of speech, Association and the press are temporarily suspended. Privacy rights in relation to telephone and postal communication are revoked.